All right, video 7,263 of my making your own color classifier with TensorFlow.js video series. <sighs> the previous video, previously on uh, making your own color classifier with TensorFlow.js, I worked in the model.fit function. So I'm fitting the model according to my training data with these options. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to basically see an animation graphing the loss function while it's doing the training. So right now I just get a report when it's done. So there's a few steps that I want to take to do this. The first step that I want to do is I actually want to move this into a separate function. So I'm going to just write a function. I'm going to just make it a global function called train. So oh, isn't it nice? Train. Uh, and I'm going to put model.fit there. Then I'm going to call train here. So that's option one. And let's, let's uh, oh, and, and I'm going to put the options here in this function. And I'm going to just go back to two epochs. And I'm going to run this. Oh, X is not defined. Oh, boy. I did all sorts of goofy stuff here. So let's, uh, let's make these global variables, X's and Y's. I'm going to need to do, again, just could use some refactoring. But now it's training and two epochs done. We can see the loss functions. Great. But still, I don't have an animation. So what I want to do is I want this to be an asynchronous function. I want this function to be an asynchronous function to happen and let things keep going. And guess what? I have a video series about how to do that with the keyword async. And then if I say ace, if I make a function async, I can use the keyword await, meaning this function will wait for model.fit to finish before it's done and it returns a promise, by the way. Um, so I can actually take this now. I could say return, await, and then I can put my then up here, right? Because it's going to return that same promise, but it will happen asynchronously, meaning it will the code up here will be allowed to move on while this is happening in the background, in theory. But I, I've got to do more here. It's the same behavior. Hmm. So why is it the same behavior? Well, I've set myself up for success, but I don't have success yet. And the reason why is that TensorFlow.js is using something called WebGL to do all of the calculations. And it's taking over basically your animation or drawing capabilities while you're fitting the model. However, TensorFlow.js comes with a function called NextFrame which returns a promise that resolves when a request animation frame has been completed. It's simply a sugar method so that users can do the following, await TF next frame. So what I can actually do is kind of trigger the animation, letting dr the draw loop go. The P5JS draw loop is just using request animation frame itself by adding await TF next frame somehow in this async function. So where do I add it? So I have an idea. I'm going to add something to this called callbacks. So, and I got to spell callbacks correctly for this to work. So let's go back to look at model.fit, um, model.fit. And we can see that, oh, look at this. <laughs> this is new as of like, unless I was looking in the wrong place, but last night when I was looking this up, it wasn't actually here. Um, these are optional callbacks that can be called during training. For example, on train begin, on train end, on epoch begin, on epoch end, on batch begin, on batch end. So let's just, let's add on train begin, on train end, just for real quick. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to have a callback on train begin. And this needs to be a function. It's going to, my life's going to be easier if I just use this, yes, uh, six, uh, arrow notation, um, and then I'm going to have another callback called on train end, and I'm going to say training complete. So I'm going to just add these two callbacks. So these are functions that are going to be executed during the training process. Let's see if I did that right. Training start, and <laughs> training complete, and I see the results. Wonderful. Let's try a different callback. 
Let's try on epoch end. And on epoch end uh, takes two arguments. I'm looking over here on this computer because I, I have some notes there, which I don't typically do, but um, it's, the documentation here doesn't actually, if we look here, it's not telling you what the arguments are for these uh, callback functions, but I, I looked them up. Um, and so the arguments are the number of epochs, so I can say num, and then a log, which is like a report. So I'm gonna say num and logs, and then what I can do, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do console, I'm gonna write a, a function here with multiple lines of code. I'm gonna say console log epoch num, and then I'm gonna say console log loss, a logs dot loss loss. So there's a property of loss that's in that logs object. So these are the arguments to every time it finishes an epoch. So I'm gonna now give it 10 epochs. Let's see what happens if I add that callback. All right. Epoch zero, epoch one, epoch two, epoch three, epoch four, look at that. So I am now getting uh, I'm getting a callback for every one of those individual epochs and we can see the loss going down and then of course we see all of the loss values when we're done. If I want to draw something at the end of each epoch, if I want to allow the animation to proceed, I can go and use that function tf next frame. It's, whoops, tf next frame, which allows me to uh, which allows me to sort of unlock the drawing thread and, uh, and, and let, let draw update itself. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say await tf next frame right here at the end of each epoch. And then this is also an async function. So this now has to be an async function as well. Oh, is that gonna allow me to do that? I think so, yes. Okay, let's try this. Ooh. Oh yeah, look, it's drawing. Now, <laughs> let's actually add an animation. So let's do something like stroke 255, stroke weight uh, four, line uh, frame count modulus width, zero frame count modulus width uh, height. So I just wanna draw a line that is, that is moving across. So for example, if I don't bother calling this train function at all, we can see here, I have an animation that's running. Okay, so now let's call the train function and see if that animation runs. Waiting, 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 waiting. Let's get to epoch zero. Oh, oh look at it. So the animation is going, but it's only able to draw once at the end of each epoch. <laughs> so while it's training, if I want to let it unlock that drawing more often, maybe a different callback would work better. And in fact, one, something that TensorFlow.js is doing behind the scenes, um, and model.fit, sorry, ah, is uh, in the callbacks, right? It's actually batching the data. So I have 5,600 data points it's actually running the, the gradient descent algorithm in batches. That's what stochastic gradient descent means. And there are also on batch begin, on batch ends. And I could sort of specify the batch size. I'm letting it use a default. So what I actually think that I wanna use, it's gonna be able to, it does a batch pretty quickly. A full epoch takes quite a bit of time. So I can actually do on batch end. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add one more callback on batch end and I'm gonna make this the async one. So it also has a batch num number and a, a number of lo uh, logs. So it's, it's the like epoch end, but I'm gonna put the await next frame in there. This one no longer needs to be an async function. So this should unlock the animation much more quickly because it lets it draw every, at the end of every batch. So let's go to this now. And we should see, yeah, look at this. So the animation is running just fine. And we should see 
At the, now, it got a little glitch there when it got to the end of Epoch Zero. Let's see if it does that again. Oh, I don't know why. So the first Epoch, they must have had to do some copying onto the GPU. I'm not sure why. But you can see the animation is no longer studying, stuttering from Epoch to Epoch. Okay. So now we have it training the model with an animation going. Let's at least, so what I really should do is graph the loss function. And by the way, I can look at the loss function at the end of each batch, so I can get a much more quickly updated loss function. So I'm gonna leave that as an exercise to the viewer, but I'm gonna just, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, uh, uh, let uh, loss p, um, and I'm gonna create a paragraph element. Again, I'm not really being thoughtful about design and interface here, loss. So what I'm gonna do here is, it's just going to have a, a paragraph element that says loss in it. And what I'm going to do is instead of logging the loss to the console, I'm going to say loss p.html. And this is using the p5.js DOM library. I could use native JavaScript or jQuery. I'm going to put this loss information into that paragraph element. So now I have an animation going. And then, as soon as I get to the end of the first epoch, I have to talk for a bit here, I see the loss function. So now I'm training and getting a report of the loss function. So for you, I'm, in the next video, what I'm going to add is inference or prediction. I'm going to allow the user with sliders to specify a color and have the label returned to me. And what I would say to you as an exercise is see what happens if you can uh, query the loss function with the batches um, and graph it over time and see, see um, that will be an exercise to you as the viewer. Um, and I'm gonna publish a GitHub repo with this finished project. So you can look for the code, this is very confusing, but you can look for the code. It'll be linked in the description in two different places. There'll be the code that matches exactly this video, and then there will be the code that's in a separate GitHub repo that at some point in the future people will be contributing to that will have maybe the graph in it and other kind of designy things that people have from the community have added. Okay, uh, great, so one more video to go, I think. And, and then some other ancillary ones that I've forgotten about, but one more core video to this tutorial series, which is adding the prediction. And I will see you, if you're really gonna watch all of these, I will see you in the next video. You can check the video's description for the next video link.